Glass. It's perhaps one of the most important inventions we've created. Whether you use it to correct your sight, watch YouTube videos instead of studying, or as a handy way to see the outside world without stepping out of your room, most of us will come into contact with glass at some point during our daily life. But have you ever wondered what makes glass so special? All of glass's most important properties are thanks to one molecule, silicon dioxide. As the name suggests, silicon dioxide is made up of one silicon atom and two oxygen atoms. These are some of the most common types of elements in the Earth's crust, and it's not unusual to find silicon dioxide in a more typical crystalline structured state called quartz. However, silicon dioxide is most interesting and useful when it becomes glass, a sheet of transparent, hard and non-conductive material. It all starts when the compound is heated into a liquid and re-solidified, but unlike most substances, the molecules don't return to their previous lattice structure. Instead, the molecules slowly start to lose energy as they cool down, preventing them from making those crystalline bonds and at the same time retaining the crazy chaotic state of a liquid. It's because of glass's particular type of solid state which has given rise to a lot of misunderstandings and myths. One of my favourite being that glass is a very viscous, slow-moving liquid, which as you might as imagine is completely false. This type of solid where there is no long-range order or uniform structure is called an amorphous solid. Glass's most important feature is its transparency, and this is partly thanks to its amorphous state. When silicon dioxide re-solidifies into a chaotic liquid-like structure, it allows the compound surface to become a uniform on a molecular level, which won't disperse a stream of light after it has been hit by one. However, there is another important factor to glass's transparency, and it has to do with why it won't absorb light like most other solids. To understand why it does this, we'll have to take a closer look at silicon dioxide on a subatomic level. There are three main components to atoms, protons and neutrons, which comprise the atom's nucleus, and electrons, which orbit around the nucleus in shells at different energy levels. The closer you are to the nucleus, the lower your energy level. When a photon, or particle of pure light energy, passes through an atom, it will often get absorbed by an electron, who will use all of the photon's energy to transfer to a higher energy level. This means that the photon, and therefore a stream of light, cannot travel through the material. There is a catch to this, for, however. For a photon to interact and be absorbed by the electron, it must have enough energy for that electron to reach the next energy field. The further the energy levels are apart, the more energy is needed to bridge the gap and enter a higher energy level. Therefore, if the energy levels are too far apart for a single proton to provide sufficient energy, as is the case with silicon dioxide molecules in the glass state, the photon will just get ignored by the electron and will be free to pass through the atom, making it transparent. So whether you use silicon dioxide's transparency to see the outside world, see the pixels on this screen, or just see better in general, you have to admit that it is certainly a very important molecule and it would be hard to imagine our lives without it. 